It is 7 p.m. Tuesday, the 22nd of January, Queensland time, and although the Bureau of Meteorology is no longer issuing tropical cyclone advice for the remnants of Cyclone Oswald, you can see based on the latest visible satellite animation that there is still plenty to talk about. Starting off with the track of the surface circulation, you can see that it made landfall along the western coast of the Cape York Peninsula, but within the past 6 to 12 hours, it is continuing to race rapidly towards the east, and in fact, within the last hour or so, it appears to be nearing the Coral Sea coastline just to the north of Cooktown. Now, we're not expecting much in the way of redevelopment, as it is still unlikely to move that far offshore. In fact, we are still expecting the center to simply parallel much of the coastline, and the major threat over the next 72 to 96 hours will be heavy rainfall and flooding, as the center will be very slow to move toward the south. Despite being inland for more than 24 hours, that is really not so much of a factor when you still have the low-level feeder bands streaming into the center of circulation from both the Coral Sea and the Gulf of Carpentaria. So this system is far from being moisture-starved, and that is still allowing the storm to dump copious amounts of rainfall, as we can see here on the latest enhanced infrared look. And it seems as though the heaviest convection is occurring across far northern Queensland, near the northern tip of the Cape York Peninsula, but we still have a lot of convergence swinging in from the Coral Sea and working its way westward back over land, and this is going to be the main theme over the next several days. The latest regional radar animation also confirms that the center of circulation is right along the coastline, but even more importantly, you see this large northerly fetch of squall line activity pushing as far south as Townsville and Mackay, and even points this far south, you are certainly not in the clear from the heavy rainfall, as you will soon see in some of the model graphics, they are still depicting several hundreds more millimeters of rainfall down towards those locations. Also, just to further emphasize the amount of precipitable water and moisture in the atmosphere to maintain the tropical low, as you can see in this animation, we are still dealing with a very robust, low-level circulation wrapping in with a lot of moisture from that monsoon trough. So although the center of circulation is at least partially over land, it is going to take an extended period for this low-level convergence to begin to weaken. And that is why we are still very confident that the rainfall is not going to erode, and we are going to see almost similar rainfall totals from day to day for the next three to four and even five days. But the good news is that beyond days three and four, the low will start to likely move more toward the east into the Coral Sea, as you will also see in the model guidance, as we are finally beginning to get more in the way of model agreement. The Oz Cyclone Chasers group on Facebook posted a similar spaghetti model plot graphic within the past couple of hours, and I also want to point out that they do provide a lot of similar content, and I highly encourage that you follow them if you have interest out across Queensland or the remainder of the Australian coast that is often affected by tropical cyclones, as they also do a very good job with the coverage down there. But one thing that I would like to point out with the spaghetti model plot is that we are seeing better model agreement over the next three days with the track more so toward the south-southeast or southeast. And although this is good news for interest out across the Cape York Peninsula, those areas are finally going to get some relief as the storm and rainfall starts to move more toward the south. But interests like Mackay and Innisfail and Cairns, you're still going to be under the gun for heavy rainfall and flooding as the strongest surface convergence and the tropical low continues to slide closer toward your direction. This is the latest GFS model depiction as we go into the next 18 to 24 hours, and you can see the system rapidly taking that turn toward the south, and we're going to still have a lot of feeder bands streaming in from the Coral Sea along much of these coastal areas, so that is where some of the heaviest rainfall is likely going to occur. And even though it's still moving toward the south, it's going to be somewhat slow in doing so, especially beyond 36 hours. You see it somewhat lingering around Queensland, at least throughout the next 72 hours. And then finally, as we go more so into the medium and extended range, it starts to work its way toward the east over the Coral Sea. I am finally glad to say that we do have better model agreement, as I alluded to with the spaghetti model plot. We just saw the latest GFS surface depiction. Now this is a look at the latest European analysis. And as you can see, as we go into 24 and 36 hours, this almost looks like a carbon copy of the GFS output that we just saw with the low starting to track more toward the south. And finally, as we go into day three and day four, it is now around Townsville. And then finally, as we go into day four, it is also starting to push off towards the east as shown by the GFS model. More on the rainfall totals in just a moment, but I do want to 
once again emphasize that hope is on the way and that is the reason why we are expecting more of a track toward the east with time you can see as we turn to the western australia water vapor imagery we do have a long wave trough approaching western australia from the southern indian ocean and this trough is going to continue prograding toward the east and it's going to weaken the ridging out across queensland and that is going to allow the system to initially move toward the south but then the trough is finally going to kick it off toward the east into the coral sea you can see the progression of the trough in the models and we're going to use the latest ECMWF 500 hectopascal depiction to show you that as we go into 24 hours the trough is continuing to deepen as it approaches Perth and then as we go into 48 hours the ridge is still holding steady out across the northern territory but as we go into 72 hours you start to see that weakness in the ridging over New South Wales and Victoria as the trough continues to amplify finally by 96 hours with the Tropical low now moving more toward the south near Innisfail. It is really beginning to feel the impacts of the weakness in the troughing, in the ridging. And you can see that finally as we go into day six, we still have the low being captured and then moving more so toward the east. Since we are starting to see better agreement with the overall track of the tropical low, we can start to buy into more of the rainfall forecast as being projected by the models. This is the 24-hour rainfall forecast depiction from the GFS and it is showing a maximum of 9.1 inches right along the coast and this translates to 200 to 250 millimeters of precipitation between Cairns and Townsville and obviously those rainfall totals are only going to increase as we go into 48 and 72 hours and look at here as we go into day 3 and day 4 look at where the rainfall maximum is being projected at least based on this latest model run you're looking at well over 300 to 400 millimeters of total rainfall between Townsville and Mackay. Now keep in mind, however, that there will be times where the model is overdoing the precipitation in one area and then underdoing it in another. It's just going to come down to mesoscale boundaries and these global models cannot fully pick up on these features, especially days in advance. So this is still just a very rough overview as to what we can anticipate but this is still a very realistic guideline as you can see with the tropical cyclone swinging more toward the southeast and then eventually toward the east out into the open waters of the Coral Sea. So that sums up your Queensland weather update for this hour, but please stay tuned to 28storms.com for more tropical weather updates. And for even more interaction, you can follow us at facebook.com 28storms. We're also available at twitter.com 28storms. And of course, our YouTube channel, you can subscribe to make sure that you don't miss a single video update, so we've got you covered.